So let me, without further ado, mention first of all that there will be two competitions running today. The first one is for the heaviest spring cot and the second one will be for the first spring cot. Both sponsored by Stirling Council and Deanston Distillery. I have a very great task to perform first and that's to present the fishing caps to four members. The four fishermen who have contributed over the last year to conservation on the river and shown good sportsmanship. Can I call forward please the following? Michael Leo, Jamil Ahmed, Peter McMahon and Hugh McCann. Can I just conclude my small piece at the beginning by thanking the sponsors who have made today possible. We have Deeston Distillery, Moore, Campbell Shortbread, Angling Active and of course Stirling Council. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let me hand you over to our Chief Executive, Stuart Carruth, who is also a very keen angler. Stuart. Thanks mate. Uh, good morning everyone. I just want to take the opportunity um, in an event like this to, to, to thank the fisheries team. Uh, they work very hard at building relationships with all of you and having spent time out on the river with the team I know how much hard work they do in making sure that the river is in as best possible condition for you guys to fish. So can I have a round of applause for the fisheries team of Stirling Council. I also want to just talk a little bit about conservation. We're all very much aware of the decline in salmon stocks across Scotland. That makes conservation a really important thing. And I know that uh, the beat here in 2010 um, was the best beat for the number of fish caught. I think it was about 1,300 caught. And to make sure that that continues, a lot of things need to be put in play, not least to work on conservation and we're going to get some conservation caps later um, in, in, the, in the morning. So again, really important um, that we make sure that we all um, do what we can in relation to conservation and salmon. And I just want to just say the last thing before I hand over to Adam Henson, and that's tight lines for 2015. Well, good morning everybody. Um, it's a huge honour and a great treat for me to come to Scotland and, uh, and to come to the opening of the river. And um, some of you may know me off Country File, a programme on Sunday evening, and we're getting around 7 million viewers regularly. We're in the top five BBC programmes, which means that the, the UK uh, people are very engaged in what's going on in the countryside. Not only those who live and work in rural areas, but those in the towns and the cities as well. And they need to know about things like this, the celebration of, of the river and the work that's being done on it. And it's wonderful that the community has come together and the school children are here and the fishermen and the council, everybody working together for a sole goal of the, of the health and, and welfare of the river and the surrounding communities. And so for me to come and help opening it, is, as I say, is a real, a real treat. And um, I'm a keen fisherman myself. I used to fish as a boy, but mainly um, trout fishing. And I used to tie my own fly but I've only ever tried salmon fishing once and uh, I was failed miserably so uh, hopefully there'll be more good fortune today but I, as we heard from, from Stuart I think that the conservation behind fishing is absolutely essential and you people are, are the eyes and the ears and most importantly the voice of the river and uh, you need to speak out and you need to get the message out there what you're doing and what you're trying to achieve and there's lots of ways of doing that with local papers and magazines but also with modern technology with Twitter and Facebook and Flickr and those sorts of things and get on your soapboxes and shout about how wonderful it is because there are powers outside the, our environment that, that can damage what you have and we've been fishing these rivers for hundreds if not thousands of years and we want to be fishing them in the future for hundreds of years. This beautiful uh, Beanston whiskey uh, that I had a little sip of earlier, I have to admit, um, we'll be floating down the river, blessing the salmon as it goes, and then we'll go straight back into the distillery made into whiskey again. <laughs> so it's, nothing is lost. <laughs> Oh, heavenly. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. 
I hereby pronounce that the River Teeth is open for the salmon season of 2015. Three. Yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. Oh, that's it, perfect. Hold oh, that excellent, great, brilliant. As a boy, I used to do a bit of trout fishing, but I've never tried salmon fishing, so I'm very excited about today. And for me, it's a great honour to come up to Scotland and help open the River Teeth. Being part of the parade in Calendar this morning was just amazing. A wonderful feeling where there was the school children, the anglers and the county council all coming together to help promote the area and promote salmon fishing. Of course, anglers on the river are the eyes, the ears and the voice for what's going on out here. And conservation on the rivers is absolutely essential. And it's wonderful that Stirling County Council are doing so much to promote that and working so closely with the anglers to make sure that fishing carries on in this area for not just the next 10 years, but hopefully for hundreds of years ahead of ourselves. Thank you very much to Angling Active, who are just off Junction 10 of the M9. They've lent me all this kit to try and catch the king of fish. Just hope it works. Okay, well, we're here on the, the banks of the, the castle pool at Blair Drummond. A beautiful spring morning in the, in the River Teeth here, and the castle in the backdrop, and as Robert Burns would say, who could ask for more, man? And I've been spending ten minutes with the Adam Henson here and his business partner, Duncan, to show them the delicate art of spay casting. And I have to say, within ten minutes, they're casting like champs. So they've done really well. Um, the, the morning session is going to be a teaching session and in the afternoon we're hoping to maybe put them into a fish or two. But anyway, it makes no difference. It's the start of a new wonderful season and here's hoping for everybody concerned it's going to be a better season than last. Tight lines to everybody. Wonderful. We've had depleted runs over the last couple of years and uh, it seems to be something more at sea than what's happening in river, although we've got problems with in river uh, predation, navian predation, and marine predation, which is a difficult subject. But if we look after what we're doing in the rivers, then you know it's up to national, international governments to look after what's happening at sea. Um, we do our own bit, and our own bit, bit is certainly to conserve and protect the, the, the spring run. We've got a very Diminishing run of spring fish, and we've got to look after them. And I would urge everybody to follow the guidelines and to put every spring fish back until June. Then, by all means, get a good run of grouse, take one for the pot, no harm in that. But we must conserve the spring run. That is paramount to the continuance of our sport. My name is Stuart Carruth, I'm the Chief Executive of Stirling Council. Um, it's a great, great day, the opening of the salmon sea fishing season um, on the River Teeth. And I think one of the reasons why it's such a great day is that it really highlights uh, the work that Stirling Council's fisheries team does um, right through the season, but also off season as well. I was fortunate to spend some time with the team um, just towards the tail end of last year and really got the opportunity to see them working with the anglers, anglers building up relationships with them, but also the conservation work that they do on the river, um, making sure that it's in its best condition possible uh, to enable the, the, the angling, the fishing to take place. Um, and I think at a time when um, our salmon stocks seem to be in decline, uh, conservation work of this type is absolutely critical um, for the future sustainability um, of salmon. So just to conclude, um, it's a great, been a great day. Um, all credit to the team for the work that they do. 
and uh, just to say tight lines for 2015. Today was open day on the 2nd of February on the River Teeth at Calder for Stirling Council Fisheries. Today we've seen around the 200 people mark, which in a cold February morning for a, a small town is absolutely fantastic for the local economy, you know. The, the local businesses put on some stuff for the anglers as well, which is always which is always a bonus. The fishery is not just a fishery, it's a, it's a way of life to people up here. And if people, we've got a lot of visitors come and visit this fishery out with the Stirling Council area, that all brings revenue in, not just for the council, but for areas round about, for the local businesses. Conservation is very high on the agenda at the minute because of what's happened in 2014. It's been very well publicised that it was the worst year on record for salmon catches. Stirling Council leads by example when it comes to conservation. The measures we have in place are some of the very best in the field of the United Kingdom. We're at compulsory catch and release until the 1st of June. We exceed the Scottish Government recommendations. We have a five carcass tagging system in place. It runs throughout the season. The Scottish Government have now accepted that and are looking at that as a way of giving anglers quotas. We also are 100% catch and release of henfish in, two th in, in October. So for us, the anglers have really came on board and if it wasn't for their continuous hard work, we wouldn't have the fishery we have today. And we'll follow the fun and so on in a day. Don't be here floating, he ran through the street. I mean, I'll do it at once, but don't say I'll be here. We have the, uh, <coughs> uh, the Talbot Memorial Trophy uh, in memory of David, who died several years ago now. Uh, and this, uh, it got a picket bar guy, so I'm thinking of something else. Yeah. Sorry. Um, this is for the heaviest fish caught all year. And the prize is presented to Mike Lutti oh. on behalf of <laughs> Mike on behalf of Simon Sai, who can't be here tonight because he's off doing. Uh, he's unfortunately he's in the Caribbean fishing. Oh. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so he did the. Uh, asked me to uh, just say a few words um, and uh, I'm very pleased to accept uh, this fabulous trophy uh, on, on his behalf and I would really like to uh, pay tribute to Mr and Mrs Talbot but this is keenly fished for every year and they've always been great supporters of the, of, of the teeth fishery so on behalf of Simon, on behalf of myself and really everybody here Thank, Thank you, you very, very much indeed. Simon uh, has got a photograph of the fish. It was £25. Mm. And for those of you that have not really seen a fish like that, that's what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Henson, I know that uh, you're staying up in the uh, Bullpitters Lane. And uh, I've got a long standing love of, of that glen and indeed where, where you are staying uh, this evening. But it's interesting to, just to tell you that that £25 fish probably went right up there past the Lenny Falls and into, oh. <laughs> into the into the Loch Boyle, past the hotel, into the groin <laughs> and into in the Loch Larrick and spawned up there. Oh. So as, as well as the um, the council workers, fishing people do, do a great job. Let's also think about the hill farmers and the gamekeepers and the stalkers and all these people up there who look after the nursery areas. And these nursery areas are really, really important because if they're working hard along with volunteers to take obstructions, to access up the buttons and all the rest of it, um, the whole system is, is good to work. And I hope that you, sir, with the, your connection with the BBC, will come up and showcase the Trossex. So we had a little secret competition today on the Drummond. There were three rods I didn't know about. 
Men eh, det kom til som jeg skulle for det første flest kår. Og den har vi i flest kår. Så man ser ofte en del vi vet døgn, det blir drawing the walk. Det blir drawing the discussion on the way down. And he will say, we'll give it to the best caster. The person who has improved the most. David, can you please announce the results? In reverse order, please, John. But a lot goes down to Tom Lawrence. Oh, your teaching, Tom, was outstanding. Adam Henson says to me that he's never casted a double-handed run. He's never used it. I can't believe that because he was outstanding. So there's only one winner. Adam, you've won the celebrity. Very, very much. It's a uh, great honour I've accepted uh, this lovely, lovely prize. Um, Duncan and I were comparing the bits of grass that we were catching. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, like we, we left into it for a little while, and I went off for a bit of private tuition to try and, you know, master the spade cast. And he came back and he had caught something quite large, which was his own face. <laughs> Thankfully, he had uh, angling active glasses on, so he protected his eyes. And, uh, <laughs> Everything was fine. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Fourthly, <laughs> <laughs> come ye by.